Great. So my name is Sean Kavanagh. I'm a PhD student joint between the groups of David Scanlon at UCL and Aaron Walsh at Imperial. I'm delighted to be given the platform to speak about my research today, which is on band gap lowering in double perovskite alloys, specifically alloys based on the silver and nictogen halide double perovskites, which Raisa just spoke about. As I'm sure everyone in the audience is aware, lead halide perovskites have attracted huge research interest due to their exceptional properties, namely defect tolerance, as discussed by Basisa earlier, uh, which allows them to be synthesized with low temperature solution based methods while still exhibiting high performance in photovoltaic devices. However, I'm sure we are all equally aware of the toxicity pitfalls of these materials, which has caused researchers to look toward alternative materials with similar chemistry. One such material class which has recently emerged is double perovskites, in which the divalent B-site cation, uh, i.e. lead in lead halide perovskites, is replaced by a pair of monovalent and trivalent cations, such as uh, silver and bismuth, giving this checkerboard cation site arrangement. By avoiding the presence of lead, these materials are thus non-toxic and have also demonstrated demonstrated both stability in air and long charge carrier lifetimes. Uh, unfortunately, however, most double perovskites exhibit large electronic band gaps, which although suitable for applications such as X-ray detectors, um, prohibit their use in most photovoltaic or photocatalytic applications. Thus, the aim of this work was to identify a controlled route to lowering the band gaps of these materials so that they may be more suitable for such applications. The project began when our experimental collaborators at Cambridge obtained these results upon alloying two topical double perovskite uh, compounds. For the lattice constant of the alloy, the results were much as expected, following an approximately linear trend uh, between the two pure material endpoints in, in accordance with Vegard's law. For um, the band gaps, using absorption spectroscopy, they found the antimony-based double perovskite to exhibit a lower band gap than that of the bismuth material. Uh, however, this was still too large for most photovoltaic applications. For the band gaps of the alloys, uh, one might also expect this property to vary uh, approximately linearly or perhaps with a certain degree of bowing between the pure material endpoints. Um, however, what they found instead was that the band gap uh, was significantly lowered uh, for the alloy compositions. Now, this was quite an interesting result. Um, and so we began an investigation of the electronic structure of these materials in order to elucidate the physical origin of this extreme band gap bowing behavior. Uh, for band gap bowing in semiconductor alloys, the typical origins include volume deformation potential effects, uh, where the electronic structure is strongly influenced by variations in the lattice parameter upon alloying, and local structural distortion or relaxations, which may occur as a consequence of broken symmetry in the alloy, um, or indeed chemical effects arising from the introduction of atomic orbitals at different energies. To understand the physical mechanism of play, we used the VASP plane wave DFT code to calculate the energetic alignment of electronic states uh, between these two materials. Due to the infinite periodicity imposed uh, in such periodic DFT codes, there is no absolute reference potential, and so a supercell approach is required in order to align the eigenvalues of the electronic bands in these materials. In our case, we implemented the method of Suhai Wei et al., um, which involves constructing an unrelaxed heterojunction supercell of the two pure materials, um, from which the offset in electrostatic potential between the two materials can be determined, either using the difference in core level energies between the bulk regions of the two supercell halves here, um, or by using the planar average electrostatic potential along the heterojunction supercell, as shown here on the right. Uh, and this plot was generated using the macro density package. However, in creating this supercell, in order to maintain periodicity, we have to use an averaged lattice constant, which can, of course, affect the band extreme energies. As such, it is also necessary to perform bulk calculations 
uh, for the separate compounds in an average volume unit cell from which the deformation uh, potential effects on the band extreme energies can be determined and accounted for using these terms here. Uh, in fact, from these deformation potential calculations, in addition to the chemical similarity of the materials in our case, uh, we were able to rule out structural distortion effects as a significant cause of band gap bowing in, these, uh, in this alloy system. So these calculations revealed a type 2 staggered um, band gap alignment in this system with both the conduction and valence band edges of the antimony compound located higher in energy than that of the bismuth compound. This behavior can be understood by considering the orbital character of the band edges shown here on the left with the bromine p states emitted for clarity um, and in both cases, the valence band maximum is dominated by an antibonding interaction between the nictogen S states and the silver D and bromine P orbitals, while the conduction band edge primarily arise, uh, arises from a nictogen P um, and halide P interaction. So while standard molecular orbital theory would suggest that atomic substitution with uh, heavier members of a group in the periodic table would yield a decrease in band gap, in this case we witness an interesting contradiction to this trend. This occurs due to the heavy atom nature of bismuth for which the uh, 6s2 lone pair undergoes a relativistic contraction, thus lowering the orbital energy and thus uh, reducing the strength of the interaction with the silver D and bromine P orbitals, which make up the valence band maximum. From this band alignment picture, in addition to the deformation potential results, we we're able to propose that chemical rather than structural effects were the origin of band gap lowering behavior in this alloy system. So nonlinear orbital mixing upon alloy will lead to an antimony dominated valence band maximum and a bismuth dominated uh, conduction band minimum in the alloy such that it will exhibit a band gap which is lower than that of either pure material. However, when we initially submitted this work, Reviewer 2 wanted some explicit alloy calculations which had initially been avoided due to the computational expense of hybrid DFT, particularly with a large alloy supercell. Um, so we obliged this request and performed electronic structure calculations for a selection of alloy supercells, assuming a uniform distribution of cation sites as suggested by our experimental characterization data. Um, and indeed, the resulting density of state matched our uh, proposed behavior with an antimony dominated VBM, S states at the VBM, and a bismuth dominated uh, conduction band minimum, thus giving a reduced band gap in the alloy relative to the uh, pure materials. So while initially unpleasant, having to perform significant extra work, uh, Reviewer 2 ultimately helped make our findings and predictions much stronger. And so this was a, this was a great first experience of the peer review process for me. Finally, the main conclusions from this work were that a type two staggered band alignment alongside the chemical similarity of the materials in question or the origin of non-monotonic band gap uh, variation in this double perovskite system. Um, moreover, we propose that this presents a novel route to reducing the band gaps of other chemically similar materials such as other halide double perovskites, which could prove crucial to improving the suitability of these materials for photovoltaic or photocatalytic applications. To end, I'd like to thank uh, Zewei Li and Professor Robert Hoy, our experimental collaborators on this project. A huge thanks to my supervisors, Professor Aaron Walsh and Professor David Scanlon, and to all members of the Walsh and Scanlon Research Groups for all their help, guidance, and friendship. They've made my PhD a fantastic experience so far. Uh, if you have any questions, please fire away. Uh, I'll be happy to discuss. You can also catch me on Twitter or GitHub or by old fashioned email. Um, and you can find the submitted version of this work available on archive now as well. So thank you very much for your time and attention.